Incorporated. Y'all know what time it is. Kent, 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 Incorporated. Kent, 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 play games for a living. Hello everyone, I'm Glenn Andelstadt, and this is another episode of Games Incorporated, where we like to play, review, and talk about board games. Today we're looking at a game. It's from Fantasy Flight. It is called The Age of War. It's a small box game, however, if you look at it in the catalog, <laughs> you probably have no idea it's going to be so small. It came, I think, in the mailbox, and I was like, what is this? I figured it'd at least be twice the size. But nonetheless, it's two to six players. It takes anywhere from 15 to 30 minutes to play. And in this game, you are taking on a role of a feudal Japanese warlord. There are all these dojos, and you're in competition with your opponents in an attempt to conquer all the dojos. The person with the greatest amount of dojos, with the greatest amount of victory points, at the end of the game is the winner. So let's take a look at how it plays, and then I'll share all my thoughts about it. Doesn't any game where you get to roll dice? Isn't it just fun? I love rolling dice. Age of War is a dice game. You are a feudal Japanese warlord, and you're trying to defeat these dojos. It's going to come in a small box. All you get are the instructions, 14 cards, and most importantly... The battle dice. Okay. Just go over the dice real quick. Every single die is exactly the same. There's different symbols on it. Three sword, two sword, one sword. The horse, the mask, and the arrow. <clears throat> Those dice symbols correspond with the symbols on each dojo card. Each dojo card is a part of a set. These are yellow, that's one big set. These are red, there's two there. There's a three set of the silver. The only single one you have, and I won't attempt to <laughs> um, pronounce any of these, is the green dojo. So, on a player's turn, you're rolling these die and you're attempting to line up and match up everything in order to defeat it and take it over to your side. Upon doing so, you get the victory points. This one is worth three, so if it's my turn, I defeat it, I get three points. And I would take this card upon defeating it, take it off the board, and place it in front of me on my side. You'll notice that the numbers range from one all the way up to four. The higher the number, the more difficult statistically for the rolls it is to get. Each card has another uh, red symbol in the corner. They all share this. It's the mask energy. What that is, is if an opponent were to have this card on their side, you can have the chance of either rolling for something in the center here and capturing a dojo, or you can steal this from them. So let's say, for instance, uh, you know, with the yellow ones, if I had three of them, and then you went and you took this one right here, and that was on your side, well, I'm going to want to get the whole set, because when you get the whole set, you get additional points. You need to re-roll exactly what's stated on the card, just like normal. Additionally, you must roll an extra mask energy. So that's how you steal them. Well, the game could just go back and forth people stealing things. How do you keep what you steal, or keep what you have? That's why it's important to go after sets. If I had this set right here, in its entirety, I don't put it in front of me like this, I actually place it face down to get the big set bonus, which is eight, and this means no one can steal it from me. So you gotta be wise and make decisions whether or not you're saying, hey, it's a little too far gone to try and steal anymore, the yellows or one of the other colors from the other people, I'm gonna let him have that and concede it, but just know that once they get the whole set, no one can steal it. The rolling mechanic is as follows. There's seven die. Each turn, you're allowed to roll and re-roll and re-roll minus one die. So if I roll all seven and I don't want anything, I can re-roll all the die and just take one away. Then I can re-roll again if I didn't want anything again. I can re-roll the die and take one away. So on and so forth. There are different line items that you must defeat. In this line item, there's two, five, and um, two Cavalier guys. So on my turn, as an example, I would just roll this die. Okay, 
So the first one is two swords. You can overstate currency. I can throw a three right on that two. Boom. You cannot, however, take multiple line items at once. I couldn't go five, um, six, two. You're unable to do that. It's line item at a time. So my first roll, you know, I'll be like, bang, take a two. And if I were to roll again and this was a three, there would be five. Roll and re-roll. Now I need two horse guys. As you can see, it gets a little bit more and more difficult. Okay? There's one horse guy. You can set him there. Ooh, nice. So I got the two horsemen. This card is now mine. I'm going to take that card, I'm going to place it there, and it's going to be my opponent's turn. So that person has a decision. If it was the start of the game, they roll, and they can say, well, I can either try and take this, what do we got, eight swords, there's three, four, five, six, seven, eight, hey, they might actually be a good steal, I'd go for it. So you would just go ahead, he'd lay his eight swords there across that line item, and all he needs now is a mask energy. Nothing, so we would lose one die and re-roll. Nothing, uh oh, what's gonna happen? Dang, nothing. So he gets, he doesn't get anything for this turn. Let's say if he did, goes over to his side. I then have the opportunity to go for something else, a different dojo, or I can go and try and defeat this. In doing so, I would do the exact same thing that he did, and if I had placed all pieces to get those two line items, I would, in addition, have a last line item where I need to get a roll of mask. If I do not succeed in getting that mask, I cannot steal it. Now keep in mind, if I were to steal it, that becomes a set. Two victory points, two victory points, but the set bonus, now I'm at five. This game is going to go on and on until all the dojos are gone from the middle of the board. At that time, everyone is going to score. Whoever has the highest amount of victory points from the dojos is the winner. Okay, Fantasy Flight Games, the age of war. What do I think of it? Um, I wouldn't categorize it as a filler game. It's a dice rolling game, and I, I love rolling dice. Uh, the problem with this game is that you play it with your daughter, and she asks you to play Age of War every day for, like, weeks. So, you know, you can play with a family, you play with kids, they love it. It's easy, easy to teach, easy to play. It says 15 to 30 minutes, um, but let's get real. I've played a game of this with only two people, mind you, and it's taken, like, an hour. And the reason why it's taking an hour is because you're rolling and rolling and rolling and no one can get like one dojo that's still sitting out there. And it's not even a super high, it could be like a two score one. And it's just, I mean, that's how it is with dice games, uh, you know, when it's press your luck, so to speak. There's some strategy, you know, with making a decision whether or not, hey, I'm going to steal this or try and get this set or ah, forget it, I'll just go for something else. You know, you sort of need to plan. Um, I kind of feel like if someone gets a, a good lead in the beginning, it's hard to catch up. You know, the dice have to be on your side if you're going to make any headway. But for the money, it, it's not bad. It, it's a cool little game. So, um, I do recommend it, but not my favorite. It was okay. So, I'm Glenn Nandelstadt. Thanks for watching. Please like this video, subscribe, and share it. Games Incorporated. Holla at your boy. Games Incorporated. Y'all know what time it is. Games, 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 Incorporated. Games, 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 games. games.